Today I'm going to share the four most common types of stands in studio photography, and then I'm going to do a shoot using all four of them. Everybody, Lindsay Adler here and in the studio sometimes I use a lot of lights and of course that means I need to use a lot of stands but there are certain stands that are better for different jobs different purposes so for example if I'm going to have a light that's above my subject boomed out for this dramatic top-down effect well a standard light stand is probably not going to do the job or maybe I want a stand that's hidden behind my subject I'm going to need a specific tool for that and so yes certain stands can multi-purpose but there's always a tool that's best suited to the job. And for that reason, I'm going to share the four light stands, the categories of light stands that I use most often in the studio. Let's start with the smallest of tools, and in this case, that would be floor stands. I use floor stands in two major ways. One of the ways that I'll use a floor stand is if I'm using clamshell lighting. I wanna have a light directly in front of my subject, filling in the shadows underneath, but I don't want it to get in the way of my shot. And so a floor stand is perfect for this because it's compact and it's low to the ground. Another reason that I use a floor stand is to light the background. There are many instances where I want my background light directly behind my subject. Maybe that's because I'm using a grid and I want an even illumination behind my subject. Or maybe I'm just working in a tight space and that's the only place I can put the light. A floor stand is great because it's low profile and I can tuck it away behind my subject. Next up is a standard, normal, regular light stand. So this is typically what you would get when you purchase maybe a lighting kit. Now these light stands are great because they're versatile. They usually can compact relatively small. You can use them if you need to use a little bit bigger light or if you need to light the background. In other words, they're just the go-to standard light stand that you can use in many different ways. Now there are some special considerations or extras that you can think about when purchasing a standard light stand. For example, some of them are air cushioned. So for example, if you unscrew a part of the stand, it doesn't just collapse down. It actually has a little bit of cushion to prevent the light from dropping. Other considerations, like the light stands that I have here, are that they may nest. So if you have many light stands and don't really have a great way to store them, this nesting option makes them really compact, which is great if you're in a smaller studio space. A standard light stand can be used to hold a main light, a background light, a fill light. In other words, the most versatile of your options. The next up on stands are probably the ones that I use most often, and these are called C-stands, also known as sentry stands. And what's great about C-stands is that they're more stable, they're more durable, they can hold more weight. And so when it comes to safety, this is one of your best options. So any time in a shoe that I need to use a bigger modifier, something that may be a little bit heavier, I'm probably not going to use a standard light stand. I'm going to switch over to a C-stand. Or maybe I need to have something boomed out with an arm over the subject. That is definitely not the job for a standard light stand. A C-stand is made for this purpose. Now C-stands themselves, they're just a little bit more stable. And of course you can use them for all different purposes. You can use them to actually hold the background. You can use them to hold the light that illuminates the background. You can use them for your main light. So this is why I have many C-stands in my studio. They're versatile, but they're also very strong and very safe. Now, just a note, if you are using a C-stand to perhaps put a light out in front of your subject overhead, you are going to want to consider some special safety considerations like counterweights and sandbags. The next and last type of stand is a roller stand. Now, this is a little bit less common, but man, it makes my life so much easier. I always use a roller stand for my main light. And the reason why is because my main light is usually what I'm moving around most often. And so if you've used a C-stand before where you're putting a sandbag on it and you have the light boomed out and you have to keep moving it, it can take a lot of time, a lot of effort, but a rolling stand because of the wide base is more stable. And because it has wheels, I can just simply roll it around my subject. It saves me a ton of time and effort. Of course, with a rolling stand, you can pair this with a C-stand arm or a mini boom. And this is the light stand that I use when I'm using very large modifiers. So those are the four categories of studio stands. You got your floor stand, your standard light stand, your C stand, and your roller stand. Now, of course, these can multi-purpose and do many different things, but it's about having the right tool for the job. 
So now that I've given you an overview of this, let's take a look at a shoot using all four categories of these stands. I've set up a beautiful sculpted portrait using five different lights and all four of the different types of stands. So I'm going to build this set together starting with our main light and the main light stand. Here I'm using Profoto D1s and D2s throughout this set as well as shooting with a Canon R5 with a Canon 24 to 105. That's my essential gear. For my main light, I've chosen a beauty dish with a grid. And the reason I chose this is beauty dish light is gorgeous, it's sculpting, and I've added a grid so that the light falls off more quickly, which allows the background to fall to shadow, and there's a beautiful fall off of light down her body. So let's talk about the stand. For my main light, I'm using a roller stand, and I'm using an Avenger Mini Boom. Okay, so what's going on here? Basically the roller stand is going to allow me to easily move the light around the set. So if I want to be able to bring the light more around front, maybe create more paramount light, or if I decide I want something more in short light position, it is easy for me to do so. I can simply move and roll the stand around. One of the things I love about the roller stand paired with the mini boom is the mini boom, it has expandable arms. So I can basically put the light as far out as I want in front of the subject and not have to worry about having the stand in my shot. But when you do so, when you boom out your light, you have to make sure that everything is balanced. So you'll notice that on the stand, I also have a counterweight. All right, so let's take a shot just with that beauty dish and a grid. The light is dramatic, it's sculpted, I have that beautiful Rembrandt light, but she's blending in completely with the background. So I need to add a little bit of separation, and I can do so in a few ways. I could add a light to the background to give her a little bit of separation. I could add room lights to carve out the side of her body, or I could add rim lights and a background light. So let's actually just start with our rim lights. In this case, on either side of my subject, I have added a one by four foot strip softbox with a grid. What this is going to do is give beautiful illumination to her hair, the side of her face, her arms, and it gives just like a kiss of light. Now you'll notice that for these two rim lights, I am using C-stands. One of the reasons I'm using the C-stands is because they're more stable and they have those C-stand arms. What's really nice about that is I can raise the lights up a little bit higher and angle them down. And what that means is not only will it light the side of her body, but it will also make sure I'm getting some illumination on the top of her hair so that the top of her head doesn't blend into the background. All right, so let me turn on those rim lights. Okay, let's get another test shot. Just like that's perfect. You can see that the rim lights are giving a beautiful kiss of light to her jawline and the sides of her arms and just a little bit of separation to her hair. But I still think that maybe she's blending into the background a little bit too much, especially in the hair. Uh, and I also think that maybe I could give her a little bit more glow, a little bit more of a heavenly look. And to do so, one of my favorite techniques is to add a light with a grid directly behind the subject. It kind of adds like a, a heavenly separation behind her. And so that's exactly what I'm going to do, and I'm going to do so on a floor stand. The floor stand is going to allow me to hide that light directly behind her so I get a nice, even glow. All right, so I've turned on the floor stand, and by the way, it has a 10 degree grid. Love it. The reason I like this so much is that that 10 degree grid, that glow behind her, it's subtle, but it adds more separation and more dimension to the image. Now this image would be completely fine as is, but looking at it, I wanted to have a little bit more painterly of a feel. And I think the shadows in the front of the subject are a little bit dark. And the reason I think they're so dark is because my main light is in a short light position and it has a grid on it. So basically no light is reaching the front of her, which is why I am adding my fifth light, a large umbrella with diffusion, and I'm going to move it around toward the front of the scene. Now the idea here is that it simply lifts up the shadows. Now this modifier is currently on a standard light stand, just a normal light stand. I personally wouldn't use a modifier much larger than this because it starts to get a little bit unstable. And I wouldn't use a stand like this if I needed to boom the light out over my subject. So this is a great use of a standard light stand. All right, we have five different lights, four different types of stands, and now it's time to get the shot. And I'm going for something that's elegant, elevated, and painterly. Okay, so I'm gonna have you pull your right elbow back and then chin up this direction and cross your left arm over. Beautiful, just like that, and chin down just a little. Now 
Now chances are before this, you probably haven't given that much thought to light stands. However, having the right tool is going to allow you to do your job more quickly and to be safer. Now, if you want to see the gear used in the making of this video, be sure to check out the links in the description below. Now there are many, many, many different options for light stands, but in the descriptions, I'm linking specifically to the tools that I use in my studio. These are my favorites and these are the ones that I've discovered through years of experimentation. So if you want to pick up that gear, be sure to visit adorama.com. And of course you're going to want to subscribe because I have a lot more videos just like this one coming your way. See you next time.